It's grand final week. I love grand final week. And I think this happens every year, but I think this year in particular has really reaffirmed to me how much magic there is to grand final week. You know, I've always said that my favorite days of the year are the draft day. Um, usually when West Coast is shit, the draft becomes increasingly important to me, but I always get swept up in the magic of grand final week. And I, I, like, I've been going for my morning walks and getting a coffee and listening to Holy Grail by Hunters and Collectors. I am so amped and really fired up about this grand final matchup between the Swans and the Lions, a grand final where I truly want both teams to win. And I will feel horrible for either side losing. We've, we've obviously got two teams that are the two most recent losers in grand finals. And so there's, there's so much narrative either way. There's going to be one redemption story and there's going to be another story of absolute heartbreak for one of these two teams. And, you know, perhaps unlike a lot of the recent grand finals, maybe the last five, I have no idea who's going to win this game. And I change my mind like the wind. I think there's also something so cool about the fact that this is a truly neutral grand final. And I think that's possibly the allure of a non-Victorian grand final is to seeing two teams that would never normally play each other on the MCG do just that. First time in 18 years since 2006 that's going to happen. And I really could just see either team winning this grand final. I can't wait. I am going to give you a prediction in this video, of course. But what is my gut saying? My gut is changing very, very regularly, but I'm amped. I'm also a big one for grand final day aesthetics. And I'm really pleased to see Sydney in all red. And I presume Brisbane will be in all of Maroon. For some reason, and I think it's only when teams play Sydney and a little bit when they play Geelong, they don't have to wear white shorts. Have you noticed that? Like when West Coast plays away against Sydney, we wear all blue, blue shorts as well. And we do that at uh, GMHBA as well. Therefore, I'm pretty sure Brisbane will wear Maroon shorts. And I think two teams wearing their full colors is just cool. There is just something so cringe to me about the prospect of teams having to wear class jumpers in grand finals. That's why I don't want to see like a Collingwood Port Adelaide grand final. An Eagles Western Bulldogs grand final where we have to wear yellow would also be gross, but I'd probably take it at this point. But I'm rambling. So this is the final edition of Just the Tips for season 2024. It's been great. Thank you so much for the support this year. Um, we've had some great uh, footy tipping competitions, which I will get to shortly and shout everyone out. We're also going to talk about um, obviously, you know, how the two teams playing in this grand final went last week, uh, the last time they met, how they actually match up against each other. Uh, I've got a little bit about their performances at the MCG, a little bit of team news, and I'm going to give you my first goal kicker, a quarter by quarter scoreline, the ultimate winner, and a Norm Smith medalist. Before we crack into everyone's results this weekend, I can't help but notice this crazy stat in my analytics. Apparently 140,000 unique people in the last 90 days have watched a video on True Footy. I didn't even really think there were 140,000 like active people who watched AFL videos on YouTube. My point being is if you are someone who has watched a video on this channel and enjoyed it, or you want to see more footy content going forward and in perpetuity, you want to cover the draft and the trade period from this point on, it would mean a lot to me if you help me grow this channel and subscribe. Thank you so much. All right, let's get into our weekly winners. So uh, in the members tipping competition, Real Swift actually won this week with two correct tips and a correct margin as well. So well done, Real Swift. This is why you're the best. And I'll, I'll skip down here and say that the members tipping leader is actually the overall winner in Real Swift. So well done, Real Swift. You have taken out the members tipping competition. If you're watching this, please get in contact with me at truefootypodcast at gmail.com. As for the general footy tipping competition, we had a 28 way tie, 28 different people got the uh, both tips correct and the margin bang on. That is unbelievable. I think we got like 13, 1400 people in that league, but still, well done. I, I'm sorry I couldn't give you a proper shout out. It's 28 people, it's too much. And the general tipping leader, which is still live competition, Ryan Chappie is still on top with 147 and 735. So that one's gonna go right down to the wire. And with so much uncertainty about how this grand final is gonna go, we're gonna see what happens, but I, I'm looking forward to it. So congratulations to the winners and good luck if you're still live. All right, let's talk about this grand final. So last week, what happened last week? Well, Sydney and Brisbane played in two very uh, contrasting prelim finals. Sydney versus Port Adelaide was a little bit of a fizzer if you were hoping for a close game. It felt like Sydney just kept them, kept them at arm's length throughout that contest. And even though Port were doing well in certain stats like contestable and clearance, Sydney's pressure and their ability to hit targets and transition really well was ultimately the difference. And Port Adelaide fell a fair way short, whereas Brisbane played in an absolute war against the Cats. And that was one of the best prelims I can remember. 
They prevailed by 10 points. They were down by 17 at halftime. Geelong did lose Max Holmes. Brisbane lost McInerney as well, which will be an important one for this game as well. He's pretty much ruled out. I did say in the football come down, I thought maybe there's a chance he gets up if he's just playing through pain. But that seems pretty unlikely reading some comments uh, from Chris Fagan. But either way, that's probably Brisbane's best win of the Fagan era, I would say. Uh, certainly their best finals win. And um, I think it's fair to suggest, for me, I think it's more impressive than the, the week before, um, which was also a heroic effort against the Giants. So that's something to consider here is the lead up for both of these teams. Sydney had a pre-finals bye. They won a qualifying final. They had another bye, and then they beat Port. Brisbane have now been involved in, well, three finals in a row. It may serve them well that they've been involved in two close games because that will build some, I suppose, resilience and ability to stand up if this game goes that way, which I think it will. On the other hand, they have travels a lot more. Sydney haven't left Sydney for a little while. Brisbane at least had a tune-up on the MCG, but they had to go to Sydney um, and then Melbourne and then back to Melbourne this week. So that'll be a factor as well. What happened the last time these two sides met? Well, we had an unbelievable game between the sides we probably thought were the two best at the, in the competition at that time, with Brisbane prevailing by two points at the Gabba. And when you consider their overall head-to-head -head against each other, it's quite interesting. Brisbane have won all of the last three games. Two of those were at the Gabba, and one of those was actually at the SCG. In fact, if you look back further, Brisbane have won five of the last six, with the one exception, I believe, Sydney upset them in round one of 2021. I remember that game. I think that was Goulden's debut and he kicked three and Logan McDonald kicked three or something as well. So we're going back a while, but it's not completely removed from this era of both of these teams being fairly good. So Brisbane definitely have the head-to-head -head ledger there, but the key variable here is as well, truly neutral venue that is not only neutral, but it's also quite distinctly different in dimension to how the Gabba looks and how the SCG looks. And these two sides have never played each other at the MCG. That is the beauty of an interstate grand final, which I, I'm, I'm keen to see. But a team, particularly a non-Victorian team's ability to play well in the MCG is always gonna be a factor, right? So let's consider how both of these teams do go at the MCG. In terms of this year's form, well, Brisbane, who probably previously had this MCG hoodoo, as do many non-Victorian sides that are coming up the ladder, being able to win at the MCG is not something that comes easily. So it's taken a little while for Brisbane to get there. But this year, they beat Melbourne in round five by about four goals. They lost to the Pies in a heartbreaker in round 23, and then they beat Geelong last week. So as far as I'm concerned, that's pretty damn good. MCG form. They haven't torn up a side there, but they've won some hard games at that ground. Now, Sydney have played there three times as well. None of them were more recent than round seven. So we go back to April 28th. Could that be a factor here? Brisbane played there last week, but Sydney touched up the pies in round one. They lost to Richmond in round three, and then they had a huge win over Hawthorne in round seven. And it seemed like from that game onward, Hawthorne improved. So that was when Hawthorne were a bit shy, but a little bit more of a mixed bag there. But I think over the stretch, the MCG form isn't too bad. Now, if this was a few years ago and, and Brisbane were assessed on their MCG form, you might've thought, oh, that will weigh in as a factor here, but I don't think that's going to be a problem for either side. So I'm, I think it shapes up to be a fantastic game. These two sides play contrasting styles. Brisbane's a much more contested clearance sort of team. So they're actually number two in the league over the last five weeks for contested footy. Sydney are bottom four. Brisbane are number one in ground balls. Sydney are mid-table. Brisbane are number two in clearance. And Sydney are mid-table. So that's just an interesting contrast in their styles. The midfield battle will be interesting here with obviously some prolific clearance players. Well, in both teams, you've got Sydney's midfield of Goulden, Warner, and Heaney that are absolutely going to provide a headache for the Brisbane Lions. Over the last five weeks, which obviously includes a lot of finals, uh, Sydney do have a negative inside 50 ledger as well. So while they've probably slowly improved week to week, they had to do it the hard way against the Giants. They came back from five goals down. They probably haven't been at their crisp top form. Now they could peak right on grand final day and that would be outstanding. But I do think Brisbane goes into this with some more compelling form than Sydney, but it is tight. So let's stop faffing around with the preview. I think this is really shapes up to be a close game and I predict it will go that way. So let's get into some real predictions here. First goal scorer, this could be anyone. I remember in 2005 being at a party where you could draw random names out of a hat for first goal kicker. And I got Travis Gaspar, who I think was named at full forward for West Coast. And I was like, sweet. What are the odds of that? The guy next to me got Mark Nikoski, who was a halfback flanker. And I thought, huh, what a loser. Mark Nikoski kicked the first goal of the game. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a forward. Yeah, and I have no idea which team it's going to be, but let's just say Tom Papley, a real basic bitch one. Probably Sydney's best forward. Um, so I'm going to say Papley. But how will the game go? I expect it to be an arm wrestle. I think there will be some early goals, but then I think it will dry up and it will be a hot contested footy. And I say at quarter time, Sydney lead two goals, two, 14. 
to Brisbane's two goals one, 13. Again, I think Brisbane will start to get a little bit on top in the second quarter, but not get too far ahead. It'll be Sydney 4 5 29 to the Brisbane Lions 6 2 38. So a nine point halftime lead. But that's where Sydney come back after halftime to lead by two points 61 to 59 at three quarter time. And I know what you're thinking. This is shaping up to be a grand final for the ages. And I my gut feel feels like it will be that. I just don't see either team smashing the other. I've probably said that in most grand finals, to be honest. You know, Melbourne Bulldogs was 70 odd points in the end. Geelong beat Sydney by 80 odd points. I suppose anything's possible, but it would just be very, very unexpected. Here is my final score. I'm tipping the Brisbane Lions to win 12-9-81 over the Sydney Swans 12-7-79. Both teams fairly accurate. This is what I'm feeling. I have a feeling the Brisbane Lions will do it. And that's all I have for you right now. Analysis only gets you so far with tight, contested grand finals like this. And I, I just can't shake this feeling of the Brisbane Lions having a new resolve. Now, we've seen finals runs that go amazing and then you know you believe they're gonna take that momentum into the grand final. You think of the 2016 grand final with the Western Bulldogs, you just thought, oh, surely they don't win this week. And they do it four times in a row and, pl- and really show up on grand final day. But in 2019, the Giants were fantastic as well. I can't remember who they beat in week one. Was it the Bulldogs or something like that? They then beat the Lions at the Gabba. They went to the MCG and beat Collingwood, who were massive favorites in that game. And then they lost the grand final by about 89 points. So which one is it? Which story here is true for Brisbane? It's first versus fifth. Make no mistake as well, if Brisbane win the premiership from fifth, that will be the second time that's ever happened under this final system. And yet, they finish fifth, but nobody really thinks it's weird they're in the grand final, right? Or at least that's my take. I think Sydney versus Brisbane is a great grand final. I'm tipping Brisbane to win one of the best grand finals of the modern era. Just the gut feeling I have, which is worth very little. And I will lock in my Norm Smith medal prediction as Hugh McCluggage. I think he's been really good this final series. I did say in the prelim, he had a couple of moments where he ran himself into trouble, but his work rate, his composure for the most part, has impressed me, and I think if he does win the norm, he probably also wins best finals player because I thought he was fantastic against the Giants as well. So there you have it, guys. Those are my predictions. Let me know in the comments what you think. I will be live streaming on the True Footy YouTube channel for Grand Final Day. I think I'm going to be neutral. I keep changing my mind who's going to win, and equally, I'd be happy for either side to win. So if your team is in the Grand Final this week, I wish you all the best. It's a truly magical thing to have your team in the Grand Final. I remember Grand Final week in 2018. I just kept looking at the AFL website, the banner that had West Coast versus Collingwood. I was just trying to soak it up as much much as possible early in the week. Wasn't thinking about the game too much. I remember going to the Wikipedia page for 2018 AFL Grand Final and it's saying West Coast versus Collingwood. I remember just thinking, so awesome to have your team play in the final game of the season. So I wish you all the luck in the world, all of you. I hope it's a great Grand Final. I think it will be and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.